Not there, but that's, it's a big part of the here. We learned to live with lots of things that aren't there. Do you think you can save me? If you did that, John, it would raise the price. It might almost be worth it. It's all 25, no. 7 you seven. kidding I'm me? I'm shocked. I'm sick. For more than a century, East Texas has welcomed thousands of dealers from across the country to sell their wares at first Monday trade days in Canton, Texas. Not limited to antiques and collectibles, this monthly Thursday through Sunday market includes vendors selling gift items, decorations, riding equipment, even sporting gear. And in the big Texas heat, there are refreshment stands virtually everywhere you turn. Promoters say Canton is a good place for collectors and dealers to get to know each other in a down-home environment where everyone gets to slow down. Not so for our market warriors. They're here to do what they do wherever they go. They're on the move to buy low in order to sell high at auction. This is a big market in a big state with big stakes. So no time for a Texas two-step unless it happens in double time. Let's get started, y'all. All right, let's go. of Texas. Mm -hmm. Cash in your chips and get ready to strategize. We're in the Lone Star State and there'll only be one Lone Star winner. Uh -huh. May the best poker picker win. That's me, baby. Mm -hmm. Tell me who that is. Here are the rules for today's competition. There are two rounds of buying. Each picker gets $1,000. The target item will be chosen by the auctioneer at Abel Auctions in Los Angeles, where all of today's items will be sold. For the target item, we would like you to find Mission Furniture. Mission Furniture that does well at auction are side tables, chairs, the patina people want on this furniture, kind of just like a natural brown to it, looks like it's been oiled. You want it to be authentic from the period. Best of luck. The target item must be one item only, unless what they're buying is being sold as a set or a pair. I got a little game for you boys. Uh -huh. It's called Luck of the Draw. High card starts off in the target round in the antique section of the flea market. The other three have to find their way there. Hmm, that's interesting. That looks like a good one. Bob? All right. Ready? Go. Flip. Oh, oh, oh. oh come on. Oh, the game oh, is rigged. We're going to be trailing you. Drop yeah. some breadcrumbs, honey. Game time will be kept by this tubular tall case clock. Pickers have one hour to find their target item. Remember, Lone Star State, there's only one winner. Starting now. Let's go. Okay. go. Ashley, I'm looking for Mission Furniture. Take me to the best place. All right, where are we? In the uh, middle of nowhere. So we got to find the antique section. That's right, because there's a lot of non-antiques here. I got to the antique center first, and I want to make very good use of my time. OK, I and mean, this is like Mission Design, because it's very simple rectilinear shape. You don't see any of the ornate Victorian detail that you saw before. But it has the simple lines, clean construction. You see the exposed knob here. 265 for this hall tree. These are very dated. And it's just not going to sell well in today's market. I'm totally lost. I guess the X marks the spot. I guess no. That's, no. Oh, and there's the baked potato. Where's the baked potato? Right here. Oh, Trade Center, too. Oh, so it's turned around this way. Right. I'm good. I'm out of here. Oh, wait a second. I know where I'm going. We're on a mission to find Mission Oak Furniture, and that's going to be in the antique section. I don't know how Mission's going to go, because Mission is more contemporary. Cleaner lines, simpler, uh, a real revolt against that frilly, overdone uh, Victorian look. That's still big here in Texas, that Victorian look. So I don't know how much mission we're going to find. It's going to be an interesting challenge. Let's just focus on one challenge at a time, John, huh? Am I heading the right way for the antique section? If you're having a hard time finding your way into the antique section... It's down this way. Then why cool. compound Thank it you. by worrying about how hard it will be to find a target item once you get there? We can get some vintage watermelons. <laughs> okay, antique alley. 
Miller knows she has to move fast because time won't be on her side for much longer. This is Mission. This is a nice floral detail. It's very worn. To get $200 for this is going to be tricky. It's a little slant front desk, original leather. I like the leather. Yeah, the stuff I Would you I work with me, though, for $200? My goodness. Look how worn this is. Yes, I can work with you, then. It's neat. It's the ending of Art Nouveau. I like kind of this. Mission, Art Nouveau, period. I like that. I'm looking for Mission Furniture. Do you have any other great pieces? What about the chest? It's How much for this? Chest. This one I can do uh, 150. We this might be very that. functional in somebody's house. I yeah. think for California. That's why they put wheels on it. Okay, Joel. Do you think you could keep that little on um, the desk and the chest on hold for me for yes, the next? Yes, I sure will. My oh, thank you. Okay. Getting the dealer to put both items on hold helps Miller hedge her bets and eliminates the risk of making a hasty purchase she could regret as she covers more territory. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, can you put us in the antiques building? Antique? Yeah. Oh, great, thanks. Excellent. We're men who are not afraid to ask for directions. They're trying to make the best of a bad situation, but they have no idea that Miller is making it worse. Each piece Miller puts on hold is one more target item her opponents can't touch. Hi, I'm looking for a nice mission piece of furniture, and you've got some beautiful pieces. What do you want for this little chest? Uh, 85. This is nice because I think it could fit in any room in today's era. I think you could say this is, this is mission. What do you think? Miller phrases the question to get the answer she wants, but she seems unsure this piece is truly mission. That's been replaced, yeah, yeah. hasn't it? That's probably out of some of the old paneling. But I don't think that hurts it. What do you think? No, I don't think it does. The more important consideration is if potential bidders in Los Angeles will think the replacement hurts the piece. I think arts and crafts, period, is mission furniture. They blend together. The styles really are at the same time, and the design is so similar. Therefore, I think this piece qualifies as a mission piece. Would you put this on hold for me? Yes, ma'am. OK, thank, thank you. Thank I'll be back. That makes this the third piece of mission furniture Miller's put on hold. At an average rate of three holds every 10 minutes, she's got time to hold 12 more pieces before she's done. This is Texas Hold'em, Miller Gaffney style. All right. All right. Good luck, Good to luck Kevin. All right. With 40 minutes left in the round, Kevin and Bob are crossing out of limbo into a section with antiques. Congratulations, boys. You actually have a chance to compete with Miller. Mission Oak. Turn of the century, 1900, Gustav Stickley, he was the innovator, we'll say. Brought the whole style in, really simple lines. You can't mistake a piece of Mission Oak. It's about as simple and plain and as you'll find. Mission Oak, anything? Arts and crafts furniture? No? Any arts and crafts furniture, Mission Oak? Both Miller and Kevin mention arts and crafts and Mission as if they're interchangeable. Mission furniture was a part of the broader arts and crafts movement that influenced artists, architects, and designers worldwide. Well, it sounds like Mission Oak is a foreign item out here. Could be my northeastern accent. They don't know what I'm saying, neither. Kevin finally finds the antique center and thinks he's about to enter the promised land. No. Nope. He's in for a big disappointment. Mission Oak furniture. I need to buy a piece of Mission Oak. I don't know if I have any. I don't think you do. The table is a mission-style table. It's in rough condition, though. It needs a lot of restoration. The thing about Mission Oak, first and foremost, is the oak. It's going to be the dark oak. The other thing is simplicity, lack of decoration, just clean, functional, straight lines. The way the table is molded to the legs, it's actually cut around the leg, so it's an exterior leg. Again, part of that simple aesthetic of mission design. Uh, the use of the cut rectangular trim, such as this knob. Also the use of pegging in here. It's just that this is in rough condition. Asking price is $74.50. Now here's the thing, something like this can probably be had for a very reasonable price. And if somebody's willing to put some effort into it, they could have a really nice table. It wouldn't take a heck of a lot to bring this back. To make any money at Abel's, I've got to get to 50 or below. Uh, if I can get 25, I'm fat, and that would really do it. So I want to make a note of this. Notice how Bob is in the booth Miller exited just moments ago. He doesn't even give the cabinet she put on hold a second look. Let's see that again. How you doing? Correction, he doesn't even give Miller's cabinet a first look. I love the lines of it. The keyhole is really fun here. Uh, the cutouts are really great. It's a beautiful piece. 
What's your best price on the desk? Oh, well, I could do 250 I have to have a price that is better than this. What price are you looking at? I'm looking at 160 Well, that's a little bit low because we pay good money for stuff. Of course. Because I love, you and I know, respect I love that. good stuff. I was raised up with antiques. I'm yes. the same kind of guy. <laughs> My grandmother had the same sofa from 1936 until 2005, and she would just put slip covers yes. on it. Yes. And that darn sofa, you know, it's still around. It's still around. And, and you know so. what? It's better than a new sofa. Thank you. It's comfortable. The, it's got the camel back. And the I wood. And because now it's almost everything is almost particleable. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you something. If you guys can make me a deal, I'm prepared to, to buy this. I want to get it for under $200. And I know these people have to make money, and this is a signature piece for them. But, you know, I also need to make money on this piece. The pained look on Bob's face says it all. Haggling causes him more tension than any of his competitors. Chester, could you do 180? 180 for... All right, for a friend you? who loves it. Right. <laughs> All right, just Look how relieved he is. Bob is the first picker to buy his target item. Mission accomplished. Anybody know where any Mission Oak is? I'm looking for Mission Oak. Anybody happen to have any idea where I can find a piece? Do you ladies know where I can find some Mission Oak furniture? Just all in the ground. Thank you. Uh -huh. You haven't right. found any Mission yet? Yeah. What are you oh, doing? Lots and yeah. lots where of lots. Anybody knows where Mission Oak furniture is or can lead me in the right direction? I I greatly appreciate it. it. Gotta go. Yeah. Hey, I heard if we take a left here, we can find Mission Oak Furniture. Yeah, why don't you do that? Hey, there might be a meatball sandwich down here, too, John. I think we're headed for the same place, aren't we? Antiques and collectibles. He has a little bit of an advantage. You can move faster than me. I smell wood. Kevin's already halfway through, so why waste my time going through? If there's anything in there, he's found it. Do you think you can save me? Thank you. You'll say it's me. Kevin, Jerry I need a, I'm, I'm looking for a piece of Mission Oak, Jerry. You got two. Show me what you got. It's a Mission Oak, uh, an all-American. Right. No way you can It's very different. Very different. It's it's an old piece. Nice wide, nice tight grain board. It's tiger. All oh. tiger. Yeah. Nice big strap and hinges on yeah. it, too. American cool. piece. It's not, yeah. a, it's not, a, not English. Do you know who made it? No, I got four and a quarter on it. Yeah. This nice little gentleman's wardrobe. Right. This is full front desk. Yep. It's a spline piece. It's all splined in here. Yep. Somebody painted it gold in here, but it's I didn't mess with it. It wasn't a big one. It was for boarding schools, the college type secretary desk. I like the wardrobe the best. If I was sitting here and I had to talk turkey with you on it, what's your real number on it? Like the real number. 375. Yeah, you don't have a number that hurts any more than that? Nothing. No. It come out of my mother's house. It's, right, so know, everything's profit in it, then that's what you're saying, right? No, it's her profit. How about three bills, man? Nah. Yeah. I was with her when she bought it. She's got 275 three. cash. I'm, 275 cash. I made you in the middle of two and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Two and a quarter, I heard it. Three and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. Three bills cash, man. Three that's, bills cash. I'd say pay me. Pay you? Yeah. I'm going to buy it. Three bills. Look at the grain on that. That's a beautiful chunk of wood right there. Howdy. Mission furniture, anything in Mission Oak. It's right, you know, it's in the same period as what we're looking for, but it has more of a clean line 1930s feel to it. This is a tough challenge. I'm having a rough time finding this stuff. Because you never know what you're going to find in any given market. And every market is different than any upper market. It's up in the $300 range. I may have to go back and talk about that rough piece and see what I can do with it. Because I'm not in the least bit happy with this. Calling that table rough is an understatement. Finding bidders in Los Angeles interested in Mission Furniture will be challenging enough. Few are likely to buy a table that requires so much restoration. Time is running out. And John needs to make a decision. Miller also needs to choose her target item from the three she's put on hold. First off, would you work with me on the price? Because the back has been replaced. Yeah, I can't do much on the price. Oh, no. Could you just go 50? I can't do it less than 80 bucks. Would you take 70? 75. OK. Let's do it. Let's get the deal. Okay. Thank you, David. Hello, hello. Excuse me, sir, is this yours, your booth? Can I talk to you about this table? This is a real gamble. I've got it. It's all going to be the money. 
It's all going to be the money on this. Otherwise, I'm going to go back empty-handed, and that's not good. Showing up empty-handed means John Bruno will have to pay each of his opponents a $50 penalty. But if he shows up late, the same penalty applies, and it seems doubtful he'll be able to beat the clock. Even paying a low purchase price, John still can't be sure he'll turn a profit at auction. Empty-handed is sounding like a good option to me. What can you do on it for me? 60 bucks. Oh, no, I've got to get... 20% off the market. Uh, i got to get below that. Federal wall. I want to spend 25. No. It needs a lot, a lot, a lot of work. On Saturday, everything is half off the mark price. I'm not can't Saturday, be here Saturday. I'm, I'm here sorry. now. Let's make believe it's Saturday. I can't. Oh, shit. Did you catch how the dealer played the pity violin after hearing John's hard luck story? Let's see that again. Come on. I can, but I'm not. I won't, but see, all right, now we're halfway there. You can. I'm, now, I'm we, not. But now, how do we make it so that you do? Tomorrow afternoon. I can't. Not. I got to do it today. No. Make me happy. Makes you happy. I'm happy makes right now. Makes this beautiful lady happy. I'm happy right now. Yes, she uh, is. I'm out of here. We got to sell this. All right. Can't do it. I hate to, but I'm going to go back empty. I can't think of anything else to do. All right, with five minutes to spare, you go. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I break your arm to $50? Huh? $50. OK, we'll do this. OK, there's tails, and that's his. That's his. What would it if be? You, if, you, if you win, you get it for 50 If I win, I get it for 60 That's what it usually does. I'm willing to take that bet. Good. Tails. Yeah. Now, let's see if I want You call tails. I call tails. Heads it is. Six Son of a gun. There are two heads on that? No, it's Very not. Good. <laughs> it was worth it for the fun of doing good. it. Good. <laughs> and if I'd have lost, that'd have been okay too. All right, you gotta help me get that out of here. Okay. Oh good, you're good. All right, we got four minutes and no John Bruno. I know, John Bruno is not I don't around. Think he can book it over here in time. Right? We gotta get to the other side of the um, pavilions, the um, oh, the Civic Center? I think John's got about three minutes. Yeah, that's exactly what he's got. I got to figure out which way to get there. Hey, you got some firewood. I did, I did. Let's hope there's a bidder in Los Angeles who thinks firewood posing as a table is worth at least 60 bucks. John has two minutes left. Right. I don't see him anywhere Listen in up, sight. John. I don't know. I hear tires. I think we're over this way. I don't know where he is. I truly don't think he'll make it. It's well, one minute left. I turn the wrong way. Yep, I did. Shoot. Yes! 11.31! 11.31! 11.31! 11.31! I can only move so fast. What is that, called fashionably late? Sorry, John. Sorry, Cowboy! I am. For a very important date, guess what happens? <sighs> You're penalized. That's right, Kevin. John now has to pay $50 to each player, giving him $150 less to spend in the next buying round. The four pickers will now assess the items to determine if they fulfill the target round assignment, Mission Furniture. Pickers can reject any item for whatever reason they choose. Wrong or right, majority rules. Found a um, mission-ish table. It's got the look. It's got the uh, mission oak. It's in rough condition. It's missing the handle. Uh, th that's neither here nor there. Definitely it's not, not there. there, but that's, <laughs> it's a big part of the here. We learn to live with lots of things that aren't there. <laughs> <laughs> but it is proper mission construction. It is of the period. It needs some work. But I did get it at an exceptionally, exceptionally good price. I hope it was for less than $5. Yeah. Right. yeah, the proof of the pudding is at the end of the day. And somebody will buy it, paint it, futz it with it, and it'll be something decent. It is a piece of mission oak. You did it, John. OK, yeah. Kevin, is this your coffin? This is Miller, my wardrobe. Beautiful grained wood, as you can see. It's got some neat strap hinges on it, all brass. It's got a little drawer down the bottom. And I thought out of everything that I had seen, this would be my best chance of making some money, so. And the back looks like uh, replaced in some of the other stuff. I think the back is really original to it. I think that's pretty much how you can see the patinas all the same. Right. It's just that they didn't, they wouldn't use oak on the back. I just worry that the function's not as useful today. It just takes up wasted space in a room. These old mission houses didn't have a lot of closets, so. Not in California. Thumbs up. I'm giving you a thumbs, thumbs up. up. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's a cool piece. It is a cool piece. All right, Miller, the big reveal. I'll take it off. off. This better be big. Da, 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 da. This better be big. Voila! Wow! 
Whoa, it is definitely mission style. It really is a mission. What oh, is this is mission, no, John. Is this is Franken mission. This is a 1930s kitchen cabinet. It yeah. most certainly is. This is, not, this is, is. A nice, you can make this into a TV cabinet today. This is definitely. You can make it into a lot of things, but it's not Mission Oak. Darn, it's definitely not a mission piece. It's a 1930s golden oak. And Bob is right. It was probably the top to a Hoosier style kitchen cabinet. It's a brand new back. It's not Mission Oak. I'm going to say this is okay, late 30s. A lot of pieces have been replaced. Maybe the use of even said Kevin's back might have been replaced. You don't beat the whole piece up. Yeah, but Kevin's no, falls into mission. It's got a mission style. I mean, the truth okay, is. Okay, he just said a mission style. Okay, I'm going to say it's got a mission flair to it. I believe this is from the 1900, right around 1900. It's definitely rectilinear. It has copper type hardware on it. It's not a pure piece of mission. It's a made up thing. Could it conform to the mission square, aesthetic. rectilinear aesthetic? So just yes. to be clear, that's our challenge is, is, is across the board. Could it conform, not is it or isn't it? I'm voting no, I'm sorry. OK. But that's me. Sorry, it's not mission. It's I'm, not mission up. This is the first time I'll vote in the middle, because I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm soft on it for you. That's all I can say. Yeah. Right. So we each need $50. This is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I get Whoa. my 50 back. Right. Thank you, darling. You no, know what? I... You want to play hardball? We'll, we'll play hardball. Ooh. Yeah, let's play, let's play hardball, Miller. Mission Everybody. Oak desk here. Tell us how you think it's mission. It's got all the architectural lines of mission. It's got the dark wood. It's the late 1800s, early 1900s. It's got this great little cutout here. Wow, I would say this cutout meets more of an arts and crafts aesthetic. That definitely is arts That's, and crafts. This is more of an arts and crafts piece than a true mission piece. That's one thing coming out of John Bruno's mouth, but quite another coming from Miller and Kevin, who throughout the whole round used arts and crafts and mission interchangeably. Mission Oak, anything? Arts and crafts furniture? I think arts and crafts, period, is mission furniture. So Let's see what the if front you want to be a like. purist, then this piece is not mission. This piece is at least of the period. That it's, is, it's definitely, it's absolutely in my opinion, mission oak. a transitional piece. I mean, it is. Right. Victorian furniture was highly embellished. A lot of curvature. You know, Gustav Stickley came along, and he was sick of all that ornamentation. And he said, you know what? Let's just make furniture bare bones, what it's supposed to be. Clean you sit in a chair, you sit yep. in a chair. You sit at a table, you sit at a table. Yep. The ornamentation was in the simple and fine just quality of the main correct. architectural lines. Absolutely, arts and crafts and mission all fall into like the same realm of, yep. of what it is. This is beautiful. I like this. Yeah, yeah that's Roy what Croft I was trying was to kind of, Roy Croft. kind of yeah. something that you would see a cutout like this on. I looked through the Gustav Stickley catalogs. You looked through the Roycroft catalog. All the green and green, all them catalogs. Very rarely ever would I ever see a carved ornamentation on a door like That's because it's early. This is an You're early right. piece. You're right. This is, is Mission right Oak. The beginning. And absolutely, the auctioneer will agree with me. I'm standing behind it. I think it falls into the Mission category. Absolutely. It's the very, very beginning of Mission. It's absolutely. the right at the beginning. This is the oldest piece. I vote up. Yeah. I'm going to vote that, in my opinion, it's really early mission furniture, but not classic mission furniture in my mind. That's all I can But it is mission furniture. It, it is. It challenge. is. It just has some unusual cabinet front doors. Bob, I think this fits within the mission style. I, I don't think this is a pure piece of classic mission furniture, but I'll say you met the challenge. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Right. You're in. in. By the skinnier teeth. That's right. By the skinnier teeth, in my opinion. Woo! This was some challenge. It was a very hard challenge. Next time, can our challenge be to find a chair? You've seen this clock. Now let's hear more about it. This is our tubular tall case grandfather clock. The crown symbolizes that it was made by Hershey Hall Clock Company. This clock has a tubular bell movement. The dial is layers of steel finished in chrome. At the top of the dial is the moon phase. The movement was American made, and the case is American made. Our price on this clock is 9,500. The pickers are on their way to meet dealers Ashley Gay and Melissa Cook for the bonus round. Hey there. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Both from Louisiana, Ashley and Melissa have been friends for 20 years and specialize in repurposing antique reclaimed wood. So what have we got here? What's this? This is a Howe sewing machine. Elias Howe was the first person to patent the interlocking stitch. Once Howe got the machine patented, Singer started also making machines, and there was a big lawsuit about whose initial idea it was. Yeah. Um, and Howe ended up winning the lawsuit and was able to sell his intellectual property to other manufacturers, and that's how 
we have the How machine. So what is our challenge today? How invented the technology that made sewing possible on a large scale. And Isaac Singer wanted sewing machines to be in every home. But he knew that in that day and age that that was a big extravagance. So in 1856, or the late 1850s, he was the first manufacturer to come up with monthly installments. Oh. Now, what we need to know is, in 1856, how much did a Singer home sewing machine cost? Okay. Wow. Who would like to go first? Why not? I'll go, go far. Okay. All right. So what's your best guess, Bob? That's a good one. 18... 1856. 56. The price of the sewing machine. It was a very good one. $15.95. Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's see. All right, Kevin, what do you think? All right, I'm gonna say $7. Okay, okay. All right. Next. Okay, that would be me. All right. To put it on installment, probably $6. Okay. That's what I think. Thank you. Okay. Miller? All right. Could I whisper to okay. you? Okay. You can just either of us. 40? 40? Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks. Could y'all return, yeah. please? In 1856, the Singer home sewing machine cost $125. Oh, wow. wow. I would have never thought. Are you kidding? No. The winner is Miller. Oh, yeah! And the guest, $40. Oh, and Miller, that? you win a $50 bonus towards your auction profits. Yay! The monthly installments on the machine were three to five dollars. The average national income for a year was five hundred dollars at that time. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah. We're about to start round two of buying called Shop Till You Stop. It's an untimed round and pickers are allowed to buy one or two items, but no more than that. The round begins now. Miller's charisma helps her make new connections fast. We've got it on hold, but it's two hundred dollars. <laughs> Even these dealers she only just met are willing to give up a table they wanted to buy so that Miller can make a killing selling it at auction. Check it out and telling the girls thank you. Thank you. She knows how to turn on her charm, but that doesn't mean it isn't genuine because it is. I like what you have, but you've got great regional yeah. Texas pieces. Okay, yeah. It's also big and showy. Thank you. As if a spotlight follows her wherever she goes. Anybody else, any guy, not the same treatment. Wow. But actually, that spotlight is focused on you. Jason, your dad gave me a great deal. Oh, that's good to hear. It was hard to work him down, but he was really sweet to me. Oh, he's a nice guy sometimes. Doesn't that remind you of I Dream of Genie? It does. I Dream of Genie Lamp. I love that show. 1963. Not a chip on it. What do you want for that? Uh, I do uh, $60. It's a little dirty, but you know what? I could clean that. That gives a character. That's when you'll work with me with the price. That's right, I will. Ooh, yay! Thank you. What's your name? BC. Uh, what's that stand for? Billy Coleman. Oh, oh I like that. Once she learns the dealer's name, she doesn't forget it. Bye, guys. I'll see you later. Bye, bye, Miller. Bye, Ed. Bye, Miller. Bye, Jason. Bye, Miller. She'll soon figure out how to strike up an alliance using things they have in common. He told me you're from North Carolina. North Carolina, that's right. I'm from uh, South Carolina. I'm talking ten dollars different for neighbors. Are you a Georgia fan? Yeah. The universe. I've got a nephew that's in Clemson now. Okay, I'm from Greenville. Really? Yeah. Or by creating a common enemy. Hi, Miller. Oh, don't give him a good price on anything. What do you got there, Miller? A lamp? Just try to get it from me. I might. You never know. Well, uh, BC and I, we're know. pretty good pals. Yeah, we have friends, huh? Nothing. Nothing I can do to get it. No, nope, it's already sold. She's spoken for it. But you can oh. always sell higher. No, I can't do that. I'm, I'm sure you can. I'm a man of my word. What if I put on cowboy boots and a dress? If you did that, John, it would raise the price. It might almost be worth it. <laughs> yeah, it probably, probably would raise the price. All right. Okay. It's a hole for me, right? How much did I tell you? He said 60. 60? Mm-hmm. OK, I'll save it for you. Bye, BC. I'll be back. All right, bye-bye. You know, most of our customers are really good, honest people. And if they'll tell you come back, a lot of them will come back. Vivian, it's nice to meet you. My name's Miller. Can you tell me about this piece right here? Miller knows how to read an audience and then make adjustments. Who do you think this is? Her razzle-dazzle isn't for every dealer. 
Sometimes it's just about getting down to business. Bostrom Brady Manufacturing, Atlanta, Georgia. I like that. The legs are pretty sturdy, but I can tell the, the wood's a little cracked over here. Yeah. But you're asking 85. Would you take 40? I can't. What about 45? I can do 45. You can do 45? Yes, and then you can haul it away. Often, Miller will gain the upper hand if she leaves a booth and then comes back later. OK, I'm going to find my good friend, BC. It's like a reunion of longtime friends. Hi, BC! And Miller's not shy about asking for the friends and family discount, either. Junk girl, I'm holding your lamp. You get a special price for me? I gave you the special price first time. 60 was special? Come on. Would 55 be more special? Oh, BC for me, the genie? That's, oh. a, that's a bargain. 50's a bargain. Is it? 55's fair. Well, you know what? Just for you, I would do 50. <gasps> Yay! Thank you so much. You're the Thank best. You. Thank you. Thank you, BC. Thank you. You made my day. All right, I'm glad. Hi, Margaret. How are you? I think you like my boots. Uh, well, you know what? I feel at home, the way you style everything. And I wanted to come back and look at it, because What's behind you here, it's so beautiful, and I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about it. It's a, a vintage gumball machine. Let me call him, he don't have to show you. I've been had him 51 years, and I've been trying to get rid of him. I don't even know. I don't believe that for one second. How did the two of you meet? You don't even want to know that. Yes, I do, that's why I asked. My uncle, he had this big truck. He would take people and go to South Texas, and we would pick cotton. And you were both from different places and just met in the yeah. field. Did you know on that day when you saw him that he was somebody special? Couldn't stand him. <laughs> One of the things I love about flea markets is it attracts such interesting people. And Chester and Margaret, she didn't like him at first, and then he grew on her, and then they had secret dates, and then they had five kids and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. A lot of penny in there. Aim it at the duck. Get a duck, get a bum ball. And it came out of New Orleans? Yes. Once a year, we kind of make a trip. Uh -huh. We started in Gaston, Alabama, and went all up into a couple of different Kentucky, buying old stuff. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize how much work it is. It all comes from a different place, right? That's right. So that's a lot of blood, sweat, yeah, and tears. That's a lot of work. It's hot up there. I love this. I could do 150 on it. Guy offered me 350. Oh, wow. I turned it down. OK. What do you think? Uh, Sort of end of day, hot day, if I'm a repeat customer. <laughs> Margaret's laughing. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get 375. Okay. Isn't it sort of like sometimes though you pay a little more for something and then you pay yeah. a little less for something and it all comes out in the wash? Since you bought that, the, the bottom line would be 300. And you, that, that's a good price. Could bottom line be 250 and I walk out right now with it? <laughs> no. I'm, no. I'm getting ready to come into this conversation. She's, she's, she, Margaret's laying down a law. Don't tell Margaret. I'll just take it for 250. Yeah, just you and me. She'll miss it. She won't miss it. Please and please and thank you and, and ice cream on top. I got some ice cream in the fridge. Right oh, well, hey, I respect the fact that Chester did as well as he possibly could on the price. I looked up some comps online, and they're kind of all over the board. There's a chance that I could make as much as $200 on it, but there's a chance I could lose money, too. Bob is real good. Yeah, I'm going to win him over, though. Well, it's over with, yeah. This is why I like flea markets. It's not just about the bargains. It's about the incredible people that you meet. And Chester and Margaret, top my list. Bob's ability to make fast friends serves a purpose, but just like Miller, it doesn't make him insincere. Business is business, however, and since he couldn't close a deal on the gumball machine, he needs to find at least one more item to buy before he stops shopping. You can tell we're in Texas because the thermometer says 90 degrees. It reminds me of uh, Peter Max uh, design. Um, I'm not sure it's as old. Is this your stuff here? Oh, awesome. <laughs> here I am talking about that it. It is a Peter Max. It is? Yeah. It's from the late 60s, early 70s. See, it's in such great condition that I would just think that well, it must be. It's because it's never been outside. That's, yeah, that's awesome. I'm in the fire station, on the wall, in the same place. Were you a volunteer yeah, fire person? Yeah, 15 years. So that's awesome. Well, I think that's really cool. It was 
took a lot out of me. You know, people don't realize how much that is. But it's, well, I mean, when you're a volunteer fire person, you have uh, to be on call, right? You had to be available all the time. And if you really took it serious, you know, it was something you felt like you had to do. Sure. It's an honor to talk to somebody. Well, thank you. That was the case. And I learned something today about, uh, about this guy here. Peter Just out, out of curiosity, what are what are you asking for? Uh, Seventy five dollars. Yeah, I'm, I'm selling it at an yeah. auction, so I need to make some money. I tell you what, what could you pay for it? Just on principle. What could you pay? I, on principle, I could pay thirty bucks. Take it. Thank you. Yeah. I really. What's that your one? name? Steve Curtis. Steve Curtis. Bob Richter. It's an honor. Nice. And honestly, Steve, if I hadn't talked to you, I would have passed it by because I would have thought it was a reproduction right. because it's so yeah. vibrant. I've had some Peter Max stuff, and it gets sun faded, and right. you just never know what you're going to find at a flea market, I guess. Bob decides to keep shopping, but he's limited to only one more item in this last round of buying. All right, got to get inside. <laughs> How much are the chairs? Since these chairs are being sold only as a pair, they qualify as one item according to our rules. They're made by Knoll, a high-end manufacturer famous for design innovation, so they stand a good chance of tempting bidders in Los Angeles. I'm just worried about this right here. It looks like there's some glue or paint on this. Yeah. See, the one price is 100. I'm throwing in the other chair. That's <laughs> oh, is the that bonus. how it works? Yeah. I didn't want to leave it on the side of the road, so I said I maybe similar. You found these on the side of the road, and you're charging me $100 for them? I can't tell you where I found <laughs> these things. That changes everything no, in my negotiations. No, I'm coming on over. <laughs> What's the best price you could give me if I dig around and find money in my pocket? 80 bucks. Mind if I pull it down, actually? Yeah. I'm going to take a seat. Darla, why don't you have a seat, and I'll have a seat. So what's a nice gal like you doing in a place like this? 80 bucks. <laughs> One of the things that I think it's important for people to know is like how much stuff people go through to oh, do this. I literally dig in the garbage in 105 degree weather looking for stuff. But I love this stuff and I don't want it to be lost. I had a dealer, I was looking at a ring and I was like kind of serious. Mm -hmm. She was just like, well, if you don't buy it, I'm gonna have to melt it down and it's a shame because it's a beautiful ring. And I'm like, you know how to sell me a ring lady. <laughs> I've always just loved it, and I just uh -huh. didn't know how to do it, and then I just said, forget it. I'm just, you know, I'm 40 years old. I'm going to do what I love to do. I'm happy that I, I came in and sat down for a spell and met you. I'm happy if you buy these chairs. Well, I said 40, and you said 80. Can yeah. we just meet in the middle and call it a day? 75. That's not the middle? It's all perspective. Oh, I know. But I mean, I mean the, I mean the, the real middle. If okay. I, if we could do sixty, I could take them. Seventy. I need to do sixty. Please. Seventy. Sixty-five fifty. Thought we meant something to each other. I'm, I'm at sixty-five fifty. I know, but I said forty, and then you said eighty, and that's usually how it. Okay. Please. Sixty. Sixty. All <laughs> right, let's do it. I was surprised. I thought I would do better, so he got me a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. I think they're going to a good home, and that's what's important. I'm gonna need to give you the money, and I'm gonna need to give you a hug. Would oh, okay. All right, money so I'll first. Give you, money. <laughs> you know how that works. Money before love. <laughs> that's right. Give me a hug. I appreciate you, Bob. Oh, Thanks for stopping you. by. Thank you. Oh, bummer. This may sound like the reaction of a die-hard Grateful Dead fan finding out that the vintage Woodstock poster he wanted to buy just got sold. Rock and roll. Or his elation when he finds a Jimi Hendrix poster instead. But these are actually the words of choice for a man who's a walking encyclopedia when it comes to antiques. Now, what we're looking at is the, the early 1920s radio. And they're called decade boxes because each of these dials is a series of rheostats that work in series of 10. 0 to 10, uh, 10 to 100, and then 100 to 1,000 to tune in your stations. This is an Atwater Kent, which is one of the really preferred names in the industry. There's no insides, it's just the case. And what are you asking for that? I need 185. If you have the innards and you want it to build it back up, it becomes almost like a home heath kit project where you can build your own uh, crystal receiver again. He's a little high at 185. If I could get that down into the 100 range, that could be interesting. Appearances can be deceiving when it comes to John. What hurts John the most when it comes to buying items to flip at auction isn't what he doesn't know, but what he doesn't want to know. 
For John, what things could be or should be sometimes disguises what they really are. This booth looks exactly like my living room. This is like going home. All that's missing are my cats and my wife. Take these movie signs, for instance. Talk to me about your driving theater signs. You got the lights and the lights. Wow. Oh, yeah, look at gas eat. I love it. They're not old. We, we make them. Oh, you make them. Yeah. It should have been a dead giveaway that they're repros, but John gets swept up in the fantasy of what he wants them to be. They look aged and everything. You sucked me in with that. It's as if all the telltale clues go into soft focus. Very cool. Is this you? Yes, sir. Can I talk to you, please? That's a pretty rare sign. It's on the 20s. I killed half her in my collection. What about things like this? I can make you a deal. Do $100 on that. You know, in the 40s and 50s, they had this little rack. You don't remember all that stuff. Oh, I do. And I have one other that's a butter pan. I can do the same thing on it. Can I see that? Oh, wow. Curtis Candy Company, one of the largest candy companies in America. They're the parent company of Baby Ruth's, of Butterfinger. I remember as a kid growing up in Brooklyn, all the candy stores had that display rack or something very similar of Curtis Candy. When something reminds John of his childhood, it should be a warning as much as a call to action. Brooklyn nostalgia has clouded his judgment once before. I grew up in an old home in Brooklyn, and we had these. $12.50. Thank you very much. So let's hope these ads resonate for a wider audience of potential bidders. What could you do on the both of them? How about 190? Because I'm, oh. I'm thin. I always think 175 for the two of them. Can I twist your arm into that? No, twist yeah. your arm. Wait. Twist. Oh, wait. That's it. <laughs> I like these, and I think at 175, we can make some money on these. Everything I sell, I want people to make money. No, this is perfect. This is right what I'm thinking. I like advertising. They're in mint condition. The bummer is all the stuff I wish I could keep for myself, and I can't. <laughs> right now, I'm trying to keep my eyes open for something with a little glitz or like a more Hollywood kind of California auction. What do you know about the lamp? It's a lamp. It sure is. I'm kind of looking for more that city type thing. Something with, with a little shine to it, maybe. Later one. Well, I'm going inside. I don't see anything out here. It's rare to see Kevin Bruno off his game at a flea market. But when he is, you know it, because he hardly stops talking about it. There's an emotion behind buying all this stuff. And uh, I feel it when I'm out there and I'm trying to buy it. All real gold? Uh, yes. I'm looking for those items that I know perform well at auction. And when I don't see them, I can feel it. It just it gets that angst going. You like your littles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. When I go. You can always tell a guy who likes his littles when he has the little magnifiers on the side of his glasses. When I don't see what I need, it's, it's, it's enough to drive you a little crazy. It's hard to tell if he's preparing himself for failure or pumping himself up for just the opposite. Probably a little of both. Am I going to change things up a bit? Yeah, I'm going to have to. I'm not finding much glitz here today, but I am finding a nice little blanket chest. and It doesn't have to have glitz, but it does have to have a look. Can I talk to you about this? Yeah. All right, cool. We've got a little wear. Yeah. It's like a little. If you're as old as that, you'll have a little wear. Right, you will. It's got a cool original till right inside of it. All the top of this right here is all grain painted. It's not actually the, the, the grain of the wood, but it's actually painted on there. A faux paint. Speaking of faux, we should point out Kevin hasn't had the best luck buying antique boxes for auction. The illustration on the top of this one was more faux than he knew. I'm rejecting this box. It's not old. Really? This painting on the surface of the box is brand new. Some pickers wouldn't risk making another bad gamble on an antique box. Not Kevin. It looks as if he's about to double down. You don't usually have one with the key. Right. Nice pine document box with nice original grain painting on it. And it's, I wish there was such a thing as smell o vision because the smell of this has a great yeah. Wonderful, like, attic smell, right? Yeah, you can yeah. just, great old finish, has the original hardware. We're going to talk turkey here. All right. Now, now, are you serious about this? This is, this is what I call as serious as a heart attack. Oh, well, okay. let's get So here we go. Yeah. We've got 250. Yes. And this I one don't was, have my glasses on. Oh, this is perfect, then. And this one says 175. Yes. All right. It's four and a quarter in my book for the two of them. How about 300 bucks cash money for the two of them? 
320. How about 310? 350. How, how about 312? No, I'm only kidding. I'm gonna buy them off here. Because I think that's a good deal. All right. That's a good deal. They're real. They are. They're real. They're, they're you know how important it is to say that I've been here and I found two things that are real? I'm happy for so. you. Thank Let's you. review all the items and what the picker spent. Here are Bob Richter's locks, a mission desk, a pair of Knoll Don Pettit chairs, and a Peter Max 7-Up thermometer. John's lots are comprised of a mission table, a Curtis candy dispenser advertisement, and a Curtis Butterfinger advertisement. Kevin's lots include a mission wardrobe, a wooden document box with original key, and a miniature chest. Miller's lots consist of a mission-style cabinet, a 1963 lamp, and a Bostrom Brady surveying tool. Now it's on to Los Angeles, where all of their items will be sold at Abel Auctions. The auction house is filling up with bidders from the LA area. They include dealers trying to buy low to flip these antiques. Others are collectors who may be inclined to spend more for what they really want. Watching the bidding from behind the scenes will be all four of our pickers. But before they do, do any of them have buyer's remorse? Or do they think any of their opponents should have buyer's remorse? Let's find out. 30 bucks for Peter Max. Yeah. That's an original Peter Max thermometer. I'm very oh excited goodness. about it. Oh, oh, Came out of a firehouse as a volunteer gold. fireman. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's cool. pretty cool. Uh, how much did you pay for the table again? 60 bucks for the table. I'm afraid this just still looks like a piece that you put in your garage. Look, as long as it sells over 60 bucks, whatever you say about it. Yeah, whatever. It, that's there right. You go. I don't know. That's going to be pretty hard to do with that table. You get to think for little boxes. You bought all the wood in Texas. I did. <laughs> no, but for LA? That's what I found there. That's what I thought was pretty cool. All right, I'm really excited to see which way this goes. Let's go check it out and see how it happens. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Remember, as the winner of the bonus round, Miller is starting off with $50 in the black. All right, here we go. On the Mission Oak cabinet, 20, 30, 40 for the cabinet. Thank you. 50, but 60? 60? Sold 50 to buyer five. Ooh, right off. You Boom. notice he called it mission. Right. He's doing you a favor. Seven on the Mission Oak Bureau. 50 for the Bureau. 20 for the Bureau. Bureau. 20, thank you. 25, 30, 35 is seated. 40, 50. 50 is standing. 60, 70. Yes or no? Yes. Six is a gentleman in the back. 70. So for $60, the buyer's uh, 3201. Ooh. This doesn't bode well. All right, on the Mission Oak cabinet, $30 for this. Oh, boy, that don't Thank sound you. 30, good. Thank you, 30, 35, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 125, 125. So for $100, the buyer five. Ooh, that's horrible. On the uh, arts and crafts writing table. Arts and crafts. 50 for the table. Thank you. 50 bit 60. Bit 60. 70, 80, 80, 90, 100, 125, 125. Ugh, I'm sick. Sold for 100 by our 726. <laughs> all right, sick. all right, did all it. right. That's what I'm talking about. You took a loss on your kitchen cabinets, but you know, not so bad. It's all about the functionality of a piece. The function. <laughs> it's not all about the functionality. <laughs> you didn't make money on it. Melo, stop selling it. Yeah. It's stop off stop the auction block. Write it off. <laughs> John's in the lead, so. All right. Let's see if this roll keeps going. I want to just keep pushing I'm that up. I'm dying to find Come out. Come on, let's go. All right, on this antique box, $50 to the box. Thank you. 50 bid 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 125, 150, oh, look at, 175, look at. 200, 225, 250, Ooh, 275, wow. 300 is at the post. Oh, 350, yeah. 400. Yes or no? So for $350 to buy our wow. Wow. one, wow. three, nine. Sweet. That helps. All right, on this advertisement, 10 for this. Thank you. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 50, Frank? Oh, come on. Don't break so my 45. heart. 45. The first will go to 4885. Oh, man. Aw. 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 All right, on the contemporary lamp, 10 for this. 15, 20 for the lamp. 20. Any bit of 20? 20 bit 25, thank you. 25 bit 30. 30 bit 35 on the table lamp. I need some help. 
Sold 30 to 5081. You got a Peter Max thermometer. All right, yeah, this I'm dying to 10 see. 10 for the thermometer. 15, 20, 25, 25, 30. Sold 25. No. Are you kidding me? They don't care. Nobody cares. I'm shocked. An old piece, an old wooden box. It was a nice one. It really was. Look at that, Miller's up. How can LA not appreciate Peter Max? I'm shocked, yeah. I, my the, all the comps on that are a lot. Wait, I know, yeah. I know. If comps could tell us everything, then everybody would be doing It'd this. Be Isn't that Just simple? anybody could do There's it, yeah. Not that simple. There's not, not a that formula to this. There's no formula. No. On the pair of Knoll chairs, 50 for the pair. Thank you, I have 50s lady standing. 50 bid 60, 60. Sold on one bed to buy her 272. Ooh, man. Butterfinger. And 20 for this one. Thank you. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 60. The stopping it for just like the other one. Yep. 4, 8, oh. 8, 5. Mm. Same loss. Yeah. And 10 for the survey. 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 50, 60, 70, 70. Are you guys together? <laughs> no, you're not friends. Okay, 70, 80s, gentlemen. 80, yes or no, sir? Sold 70s to the lady. Buyer. There you go. 18.50 for $70. Yeah. On the antique box here, on the box, 20 for the box. Thank you. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200, 225, 250, 275. Told you country sells good over there. Deck. Wow. wow. Sold to buyer 11.52. Sweet. Wow. I would never have thought country would sell in yeah. LA like that. Woo yes. Back. Yes. I knew all the other pickers would be looking at mid-century modern, so I kind of focused on Americana. Bob, with computers, there's really no need for something like a writing desk. That's sad. I know, but that's the <laughs> truth. Miller, lamps are tough. It's completely a matter of personal taste. And unfortunately, at auction, you need two people of that same taste. Only the, the best of yeah. the best is really bringing all the big money to You're it. absolutely mm -hmm. right. John, I think when it comes to advertising, we're looking for brands that are still in business and things that people are very nostalgic for. So Butterfingers and Butterfingers available. probably owned by somebody else now, and Curtis is oh. probably long gone. I mean, that makes good sense. So, mea culpa. I just purchased a surveyor tool. I thought it was a very beautiful piece. It looks very antique, and uh, that's something that could be very nice in a home or an apartment as a decoration. So I was surprised there was an interest in that piece, and but I was able to get it at the right price, I think. Sold 70 to the lady, buyer 1850. It was a complete wild card. I've never heard of the, this type of item before, and uh, it's a first. I purchased the Noel Pettit chairs, a set of two. When I saw the chairs, I knew for sure that I was going to bid on them. Aesthetically, they were really attractive, and it's got really clean lines, and it's got the bent wood, and people just go crazy about that. I think that I got a great price on the chairs today. I was very surprised I was the only bidder. Sold on one bid to buy her 272. I think that if, if given another crowd, it could have went higher. It, it could have went much higher. Um, it really just depends on who's here. Knoll does have a pedigree, so uh, there will always be a market for mid-century modern Knoll furniture.